Well, let's start the video right here on Google Earth. I wanted to show you this very interesting guided tour that you can find here by typing CERN. A guided tour that essentially takes you to the largest particle collider on the planet, the CERN Collider. And here you can kind of explore what all of this looks like from the perspective of an engineer or a scientist working here. Or you can kind of zoom in, exploring the city itself, admiring the entire infrastructure that was created in order to make this particular project operational. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be answering a question that I often get asked on the channel and didn't really get to answer before. The question being, why is it that we haven't really been able to create any black holes here on planet Earth? Could a particle collider produce a black hole? And would such a black hole be dangerous in any way to our planet? Something that appeared as a major concern for the last couple of decades ever since CERN became operational, with this article by NASA being particularly intriguing because of the title, The Day the World Didn't End. And all of this was because of several articles written in various uh, magazines back in the days that suggested that, maybe in theory, these particle colliders could actually produce some kind of a black hole that could, maybe, absorb everything on the planet and destroy planet Earth. But could any of this happen? Could these black holes be produced in the collider? And could they actually destroy anything? Well, if you're about to click away from this video, the answer to all these questions is no. But let me explain to you in more detail. So one of these concerns was actually because of how powerful CERN has become. It's currently able to collide different types of subatomic particles at ridiculously high velocities with extremely high energies. And in the last few years, as the scientists installed more and more upgrades on this particle accelerator, they were able to beat previous records, achieving higher and higher energies. Which in essence allows them to create a lot of other subatomic particles or exotic particles that could have been predicted by some studies or could have never been thought of before. And that's of course how the confirmation of the Higgs boson came to be as well. The existence of a subatomic particle that was very hypothetical until it was discovered approximately a decade ago. But every few years, the higher and higher energies are achieved and new records are established. Which at least in theory could allow the scientists doing all of this discover new unusual subatomic particles, new phenomena or potentially even new physics, something we've discussed in one of the previous videos from a few months ago that should be in the description. But early on, specifically in the first few years, there was a bit of a concern in regards to what could be created by these collisions. Could the scientists accidentally create something we don't really want to create on planet Earth? For example, could you somehow merge particles in order to create something extremely dense, something resembling a black hole? A black hole that starts small, but eventually absorbs the entire planet and everything around it as well. And that's why science communication as a field and as a profession is super important. Because very often people misunderstand certain concepts and very often associate certain words or certain principles with something that is not actually true. In this case, black holes. Many people today imagine a black hole as a kind of a vacuum cleaner with unlimited power. Something that is super super powerful and something that essentially sucks up all of the matter around it. And something that, even though it could start small, would eventually absorb everything around it and expand, creating something even larger than before. But that's not actually what we believe black holes to be. And we don't actually think they do that at all. For example, in theory, you could turn anything into a black hole. You could take an apple or you can actually take yourself and condense yourself into a very, very dense mass that would then become a black hole. But in order for an apple or in this case you to become a black hole, it would actually have to be ridiculously small, even smaller than any subatomic particle. For example, you can use this calculator that you can find in the description to try to calculate how big of a black hole you would become based on your mass. In this case, an average adult would actually be a black hole of 10 to the power of minus 17 nanometers. And that's super, super, super small. Once again, that's smaller than most subatomic particles. On top of this, we know that black holes generally evaporate, and that's based on the Hawking radiation principle, something that was proposed uh, by iconic Stephen Hawking a few decades ago. And according to this calculator, the lifetime of this black hole would be 1 times 10 to the power of minus 11 seconds. 
a tiny tiny fraction of a second before this black hole completely disappears, becoming just energy. And a black hole that's so small and a black hole that only exists for such a short period of time would not have time to do anything to anything around it. It would not be able to absorb any matter, it would not be able to do anything to any of the atoms or particles around it, and it would just disappear and nobody would know it even existed. But that's a black hole that's mass of a person. In this case, the amount of material used in these studies is minuscule. And so the size of this black hole decreases dramatically. And so does the total lifetime of this black hole. If ever such a black hole was created, it would actually exist for less than the universe allows. The minimum time frame we have is called Planck time. In this case, it seems to be below that limit. In other words, in terms of the modern understanding of how we think the universe works, it would not actually allow for this black hole to even exist, or if it did exist, it would probably break some laws of physics somewhere. But also because black holes don't work like vacuum cleaners, but actually work more like typical objects with typical mass, in this case it's all about gravity. So even an object that, for example, is your mass, or let's just say just an average adult, would not actually exert that much gravity on anything around it in order to absorb more mass or to add more mass to itself. Because the only way a black hole can increase in mass is if it actually starts adding more mass to itself through some sort of a collision. But because of the tiny size of this particular black hole, it would simply be incapable of touching anything or reaching anything. Its gravity is also very low, so it's not going to be attracting anything either. So even if a black hole was somehow created in some kind of a particle collider, it would just be insignificant. It would disappear without anyone ever knowing. And that's actually why it's almost impossible to currently answer the question of whether these black holes have ever been made on planet Earth. Even if they were created, they disappeared before anyone noticed. But also the question is, could it be created? Well, the answer to that is probably also no. Even though the collision energy between these particles is really high, it's still relatively low. As a matter of fact, some of the natural particle accelerators, such as various black holes, various very powerful explosions somewhere out there in the universe, produce particles with energy hundreds of millions of times higher than anything we can create here on planet Earth. And even natural particle accelerators in the magnetosphere of our planet, created by the interaction of the magnetosphere with the solar radiation, create something that's more powerful than we create in CERN. And so if black holes could be created anywhere, they are more likely to be created around our planet, not on it. But even here we don't think it's happening at all. And if it has ever been created on our planet or above our planet, well, there would be signs of this somewhere. Possibly signs of large explosions, large parts of matter missing, or something. As a matter of fact, there was an article I discussed last year that briefly talked about the hypothetical scenario where black holes could be colliding with our moon. And there should be a way for us to detect them by using modern calculations of various craters. So far nothing, but still possible. But if by some chance CERN does create a black hole, based on current calculations of the total mass used, it would only be approximately 5 times 10 to the power of minus 20 grams. Once again creating a black hole that's just impossible, both in terms of the time that it would exist and even in terms of the total size. It's actually below the allowed total length. It's lower than one Planck length, the small size that the universe currently allows. According to this calculator, here is the smallest amount of material needed for a black hole to actually exist in terms of the length. And in this case, it's going to exist for a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the time. It's equivalent to about 11 micrograms, or the amount of material you sometimes find written on, for example, a vitamin pill bottle. And that's way more material and way more total mass than the scientists actually use inside these particle accelerators. Because of the amount of energy required, the total mass here is much, 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 much lower. And as you can see from this calculation, the total size of this black hole is also minuscule. So there's absolutely no way it can ever affect anything around it. Now it might still be affected by gravity of planet Earth, but even as it travels through our planet, it's unlikely to touch anything or unlikely to interact with any of the particles either. But even if it did absorb some of the particles as it moved through the planet, it would still only absorb several thousand different particles, increasing its mass by just a tiny fraction. 
In other words, it would not turn into this super massive black hole that would destroy everything. And if it keeps absorbing more and more mass as it travels through the planet, it would actually take it a pretty long time before it becomes anything significant. In order for this black hole to become large enough to finally affect anything around it, it would probably need trillions and trillions of years of traveling through the planet and constantly absorbing mass. But because of the Hawking radiation, it's most likely going to evaporate faster than it's going to have a chance to absorb something else. And so in order to create a stable black hole that's going to exist long enough for it to start absorbing mass from the planet and to possibly even grow larger and larger in size, you would need to have an initial mass of at least several billion tons. Because without this mass, it's going to become unstable and then evaporate. But if there is a black hole that's several billion tons in mass, in that case, it can actually start absorbing mass around it and grow larger and larger. Something that the scientists think might exist out there, something we refer to as primordial black holes, and something the scientists have used to explain the hypothetical dark matter that might exist in the universe. At the moment, all of this is still hypothetical, and none of this is certainly known. And since none of the particle accelerators on the planet can accelerate so much mass all at once, creating anything similar to this, we don't actually have to worry about some kind of a black hole destroying planet Earth. At worst, even if the black hole is created, it's going to disappear before anyone can even notice. But at best, there's just not enough mass for the universe to even allow for this black hole to exist. We can create other particles, subatomic particles, but we cannot create a black hole that's going to exist because either its total size or its total time of existence is beyond the Planck length or the Planck time. The minimal length and the minimal time allowed by the universe itself. And so that's why CERN or other particle accelerators did not end the planet when they started operating. But they did discover a lot of intriguing things and potentially even things violating modern physics. At least modern understanding of physics. And that's something I've discussed in one of the previous videos you can find on the channel or somewhere right there. Or also in the description below. There's also this other video about the potential formation of neutron matter on the planet that you might want to take a look at as well. It's somewhat different from what we've talked about today, but it's related to the unusual exotic particles that the scientists are trying to create on the planet. Something that was also created in the particle accelerator. But anyway, on that note, hopefully this answers your question. So don't worry about black holes on planet Earth. Probably not going to happen. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.